Hey guys, this week's video is going to be a little bit different. If you guys are not aware, on the Jailbreak subreddit, we do have a podcast team, which I am part of now. So when a new episode of the podcast comes out, I will also be adding it to my channel right here. Links to everything will also be in the description below, and make sure you guys check out the whole entire team's website, and it will be greatly appreciated by us. So without further ado, I will start the podcast. Because it's the step in the boot which enforces application sandboxing, K slash ASLR signing and randomization, as well as code signing, these are all steps that need to be tiptoed around and voided during a jailbreak. Hey guys, this is Josh with Jailcast, and here today I have Jamie, our founder, William, our developer guru, uh, Derek, also known as Imtac, and Arrow. How's it going, guys? I'm doing hey. well. How are you? Okay. Doing yeah, good. good. Awesome. Awesome. So we have uh, a lot of stuff to talk about today. And um, I guess I will just um, sort of take it from the top. We, um, I think we sort of uh, pissed off somebody last episode. <laughs> um, and uh, this person is uh, known as uh, Stefan Esser, Ionic. And this is totally our bad because we really shouldn't be kind of like jumping on a bandwagon of the subreddit of calling him or anybody a troll. Um, so, you know, this is my and or our public apology saying, you know, sorry, he messed up, more human. Um, maybe maybe we get a little bit too comfortable in our role as uh, podcast hosts. And, you know, it's it's kind of an informal show. And, uh, and so we kind of get carried away. So we don't think you're a troll, Ionic. And uh, we'd actually um, love to have you on the show to kind of correct some of the things that we were completely wrong about, uh, including the the information we uh, the misinformation we spread about Apple's signing process and the the illegality of it. Um, so, can you guys give some more information about that at all, or like why we were wrong? I mean, I read read on a post that it would be illegal to break the encryption that holds like the signing process so i was you know mm -hmm. putting that information forward and it appears i was wrong so yeah that's my bad yeah my mistake that i was spreading lies yeah i i feel like it was we were i, th I thought it was illegal to actually like steal the private encryption key so um anyway uh i wouldn't say it's illegal yeah yeah i guess i don't know so we should just say it's not illegal <laughs> yeah, and it's our bad, and yeah, you know, yeah, life goes on. What do you think, Derek? Well, it's a hard question because it's a, when they change to the whole AP ticket version or way of downgrading, upgrading, uh, verification. Um, they it's server side, so you can't really do it unless you have a way inside Apple to get the keys. I would assume, like I like, don't quote me on anything. I really don't have any idea of the logistics of how it works. I just have a basic idea, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. I feel like Ionic has a way, and I feel like the downgrade tools, I mean, stuff like Odysseus, or however you say it, is uh, device-based. I mean, Odyssey OTA works because Apple is still citing OTAs for iPhone 4S and iPad 2, like the iOS 6.1.3 version. It could be patched any minute, but they're still signing, okay. signing yeah. that version, so that's how that tool is able to work. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That's how that yeah. works. Um, so let me follow up my apology, too, with like an addendum of... Uh, so, you know, we're not security researchers. We're, you know, we only have one tweak developer with us, William. And, um, you know, a lot of what we say is opinion and conjecture and just we just joke around and have fun on the show and sorry if we're wrong kind of thing. <laughs> so anyway, we probably yeah. shouldn't spend too much time talking about it. Uh, we'd yeah. love to Moving have you on, on the show, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, so uh, next topic, who wants to take it? So I could take the first topic we have linked here. So. Someone requested to have a function in the YouTube app called Up Next or like queuing, queuing videos. Actually, I look, I have this on my Chromecast and I use it all the time. It's great just to load up a bunch of YouTube videos and just binge watch them. So 
Yeah. I'd love to have this in the YouTube app. So someone please. Why isn't this a feature by now? Yeah, I know. What um, the heck? <laughs> even on the website, you can't like hit add to queue. And I mean, I've tried like Chrome extensions, but I can't find it. Hmm. Actually, a developer called E99889 said, I'll look into it. And yeah, I think, or I hope he's going to make a, make a tweak that enables this. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a natural feature. Yeah, so who wants to take the next thing? It was this was really quick. So yeah, Josh, do you want to take the next stuff? Um, yeah, rolled up. So uh, it looks like Instagram has rolled out uh, like a multiple sign-in uh, feature. So slices. So it's basically similar to slices, um, which so, and for people who don't know, slices was a tweak or is a tweak that you can basically do that with uh, any any uh, app so oh whoa that was that was cool that was actually posted by uh, john coates who wrote flex that's really cool, cool. Yeah. anyway um so, so i guess there were, sorry go, go ahead yeah so there was actually a flex flex patch that enables everyone to have this because now it's just select users who get to enjoy this so mm -hmm. i think he did a flex patch that enables this for everyone yeah yeah that's what it said um, there's a comment from him in the uh, post yeah so that's super that's cool. actually quite cool i can really like find the use in this for people who like have a personal page or maybe a business page or a photography page or something oh and yeah it's just a piece of crap thing to do to log in and out and in and out every time you have to change accounts oh yeah i know i'm going to be using this soon because i'm actually i have a couple of jobs coming up that i'm going to be managing social media for like completely different sects of, of or whatever sectors of the uh, tech world so william you're into this whole development thing do you know anything about the error 53 thing we have posted about error 53 uh, is that's the Touch ID yep, problem, on right? The where you replace iPhone 6 and the success. Yeah, yeah. And my opinion on that was the 5S has one. Yeah, I don't, I I don't know if Error 53 applies to the 5S. It though. Probably I'm not would. sure. Um, no, actually, I read about I this, admit. and it's the you can replace the home button on the 5S, and it will just disable Touch ID, and it won't give you the Error 53. Yeah, on the 5S, I think it displays on. I think it just does that with the Touch ID. Yeah. Um. But I know, but people were mentioning that it shouldn't brick no, your phone. It shouldn't. <laughs> it sh it should just say it should it should just require you to put in your passcode or whatever it was that so someone mentioned that, and I go, you know what? That's much smarter than what they yeah, did. Yeah, or disable disable Touch ID, disable the actual hardware, and then that would cause people to go back yeah. into Apple and get it fixed the official way. You know, I don't know anything about how touch id works God, I know. or what people can do with with malicious touch id hardware mm -hmm. you know can they access the the fingerprints well, if it's, right if it's malicious uh, hardware i could i would say yes they probably could right so but i don't think is i don't know i have no idea how it works i have no idea how the memory management does or whatever yeah but uh I wouldn't want to put a third-party Touch ID in my phone to begin with. If my Touch ID broke, I'd bring it to exactly. Apple, first of all. Uh, but the thing is, I also shouldn't be penalized for not spending $600 to replace it. I don't know how much it actually costs, but as an over-exaggeration, uh, I'd imagine it's close to, like, pro it's probably really expensive yeah. to replace a Touch ID. So, the thing is, I don't know what, malicious things you could do with a hardware like implementation like that you know can they phone home with that information right so can they access it without you even having to use your thumbprint right or your whatever it was uh you know the second it boots up will it automatically have your information yeah i mean for you know? for us in finland apple apple's shops is not an option because it's, there isn't one here in finland that's a good yeah. point but you could always send it in, right? Or no? Yeah, I think you could, but then again, you wouldn't have it for weeks. Yeah. I I feel like if your Touch ID broke and you brought it to Apple, they'd probably just give you a new phone. Yeah. Maybe. They should. They even do that sometimes with screens. Like, if you break your screen and it's too broken, they just chuck it and transfer your information and give you a new one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had uh, let's see, my five replaced where uh, I was having issues with the um, what is it, the lock button and something else. I can't remember what else it was, but it was a combination of the two things. And um, they were just like, okay, here you go, swap it out. I mean, they usually just give you a new one. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, it was cool. It was super cool. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and um, throw some more links to in, in the, uh, the notes while we're talking. So. Okay, no problem. So yeah. I think we should move on to the next topic because we're pretty here. I mean, as a summary, error 53, if you replace your iPhone 6 or 6S home button, don't ever restore it. Or if you have done that, don't restore it. It's going to break. Yeah. 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 Bummer. I mean, yeah. it's it kind of goes along with what we were saying last episode where um, you shouldn't install anything that you don't know about. And more than that, like you shouldn't do anything to your phone without researching it. Yeah. You know, don't just blindly update to the newest uh, firmware. Don't install things without doing, you know, at least a little bit of research. Google it, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I'm still on 9.0.2, and I'm not going to change it at all until I know for a fact that the next firmware is jailbroken and stable. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, who wants to take the next link? Um, Derek, you want to take it, or? Is it the battery status bar? It yep. is. Um, battery status bar? Yeah, so this is an interesting thing. I, I put it in here because... Sorry, go ahead, Derek. Where... I haven't I haven't used this tweak, so I really don't know. Um, let me look into it. Hold on, where where are these show notes? Oh, <laughs> hang on. They're in this uh, the Skype chat. Where are these? Okay, so Josh, I think you oh. can do this. I'll take it. Um, okay, so yeah. basically, I've I've not used there. battery status bar since like the beginning of whenever it came out. I think it was iOS eight. Um, and and William, okay. you're a good friend of the of the developer, right? A very good friend. In fact, I made it. That with is him. so cool. That is so cool. Um, by the way, we need to get him on the show because it'd be cool, and we can, maybe we can have him talk about this. Yeah. Um, but basically, the issue was, you know, last episode, and I think I've talked about this in other episodes too. Is is um, I love the, the the subreddit because you can always find like the weirdest, like most obscure issues to your problems. And so this guy, you know, has been uh, plagued with this issue where his um, what was it? Like it was a quick quick look thing. Um, or quick, yeah, he was uh, unable to use quick look to view attachment previews on iOS 9. So I think that was, um, I think that's a touch ID, or uh, touch ID, sorry. That's a 3D touch thing, where you can 3D touch on an attachment, and it'll show you a preview of it. Oh, that's Great cool. Great little feature, but, you know, something about battery status bar was breaking that. And so... Um, what? Weird, I know, and uh, and I mean it's sort of anecdotal because this guy just says that he uninstalled it and then it fixed it, but I mean that's kind of evidence. I'll itself. talk with uh, John about yeah. it. Yeah. See. So um. So anyway, that's the issue. Battery status bar was breaking the quick look, and I guess a um huh. an alternative is called power bar. It's a free alternative, but it's not quite as feature rich as a uh, battery status bar. Yeah. So, um. Anyway, I love Battery Status Bar. I think it's ninety nine cents, um, most likely on Big Boss. Um, anyway, it's a great tweak. Check it out if you don't have uh, 3D Touch. <laughs> I don't have 3D Touch <laughs> on the 5S, which sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have it. I have no success. Super bummed. So, anyway, anybody want to take the next one? The Grid Switcher CP Discord? I think Derek could take the next one. Derek, did yeah. you get the show notes? Yeah, I did. I got it. Okay, go so... Uh, CP Digital Darkroom his, and his uh, grid switcher tweak, which I don't know if everyone knows, was a, a I don't know if it was iOS 8 or just iOS 8 or iOS 7 too, um, tweak that had your app switcher as a grid. And the weird thing was about him is I personally trust uh, CP Digital Darkroom a lot when, when it comes to tweaks. And uh, I guess tweak was the whole drama with tweak was mm-hmm. kind of happened around the same time. And tweak would Tweak was made gritty, which looks exactly the same. So I'm not sure what to think. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, it's well. It seems that like, sorry, keep going. Uh, I would choose CP Digital Darkrooms over uh, Tweak was. I mean, he's a great developer, but buggy. Well, you know what uh, I mean? Quick question: What what devices do you run? 
Uh, I have a 6S and a 5S. Okay. I'm on my 5S. I'm on the 6S. So I think I think um, that I suspect that's why you don't have any problems with um, Carlos's tweaks because he I think he has a 6S and that's what he he uses a lot to test. I think even though now supposedly I think he updated um, and he only has like a 5S or something to show for. Anyway, um, I've kind of had a, a little bit of an opposite experience. Um, some of his tweaks work, and then some of them are just like horribly broken. Um, hide Me X. X was like super cool. Actually, Hide Me whatever two or whatever was was really good, and I used it a lot, and um, I was excited for Hide Me X. And then my phone was just having so many problems a while ago, and I literally in- uninstalled everything by just um, going in and uninstalling uh, Substrate. And then once I went through the process of reinstalling everything, it was Hide Me that was uh, crashing all of my apps. And so, you know, and he hasn't fixed it. And so that's that's my one complaint about him. He's like super talented, but I think he's like, he overreaches a little bit. And, you know, kind of almost. Yeah. And he, sorry, go ahead. I re- I'm sorry. If you're talking, I don't want to interrupt. I, no, I, no I was kind of just rambling. I, I have been accused of talking way too much. So you guys need to talk more. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> like the whole thing in the last Geocast episode with, uh, man, now I have a mind blank of which tweak it was that was made in like 11 hours or something, and logger. which is good. Logger. Yeah, yeah, logger. And CP, like, I, I don't know what, I don't know how he does it. He just blows out tweaks in an hour, and it's like. I did notice that. It's, it's impressive. So crazy. Right? I, I don't, I don't know what it is. Either his motivation is absolutely insane, uh, yeah. which. Props to him, because sometimes I get really motivated and I'll bust something out in like by the end of the day. Yeah. But other times it'll take me like months to, f- to even finish a yeah. project. But he does finish tweaks pretty quickly. It's like he has an inner knowledge of what exactly to do when someone recommends yeah. a tweak. Yeah. Totally. It's impressive, man. Props to him. Yeah. I mean, actually, I just want to touch on this rumor that Apple's going to make a four-inch iPhone again. What do you think of that? Mm. Oh my god. I think that's way overblown. Yeah, it's it's having such a like stupid name as the iPhone 5SE. Yeah. Why don't we just call it a bunch of like A B C D E F G while we're at it? <laughs> maybe like something like the five. Okay, five C is taken. Obviously, or six C maybe. I think six C would be like a better than five E. Five E, five S E. I don't know. Like, don't go back yeah. to five. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Six, That's kind of weird. Six, a six C is my like preferred. Thing. Yeah. Small. Yeah. Yeah. iPhone six small. Well, maybe they're not going to call it the six C because <laughs> then that would, you know, indicate that it's the size of the six. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. <clears throat> I hope they do make it though, because I I know that there's a lot of people, a lot of women that the um, six is still a little bit too big for. So, yeah. But then it's not though, like, cause I thought it was gonna be maybe too big, and it's it's perfect. Yeah, when you first get it, and then you get used to it after a while. Like, I don't think about it anymore. I mean, I actually put a link in the show notes that shows there was an article on BGR.com that shows like every iPhone popularity right now. So, mm-hmm. if you can get that up, so I can actually just talk talk you through it. It's iPhone six is dominating at thirty five percent. And yeah. surprisingly, the second most popular iPhone at this time is still the 5S. It's before the 6S. Wow. The 5S comes in at 19.1%, and after that comes the 6S at 13%, and then the 6 Plus at 8.5%, iPhone 5 at 7.6%, iPhone 5C at 58 iPhone 4, uh, iPhone 6 Plus at 4.27%, iPhone 4S at 4%, iPhone 4 at 1.7%, and older iPhones at dot oh three percent interesting i mean i find it interesting that the iphone 5c is actually like doing better than the 6s plus because i thought no one bought the crappy 5c except me it's literally a five with plastic yeah i was actually stupid <laughs> stupid enough to buy the 5c you know back in the day well yeah and i felt like i mean i don't want to hate on people who don't have as much but like i feel like when I saw it, it was like a bunch of 8th graders all had 5Cs all of a sudden, which is good for them. But, I mean, it wasn't really an upgrade. I mean, I 
I mean, if you want an iPhone and don't have that much, I really like suggest going the used route. Yep. Like the five C was just an five. And it's still 32-bit, which, I mean, isn't that important, but for jailbreakers it is in some cases, because 32-bit support isn't always there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Euknity, yeah. or whatever you call it, that uh, control switcher thing that uh, CP Digital Darkroom made, like, it, it crashes on my 5. I can't get it out of safe mode. Hmm. Well, yeah. Interesting. But I think, yeah, you can get, like, a used iPhone 6 or 5S for quite, you know, quite affordably. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, the thing is, is I think what it is, a lot of people don't want to, um, like, spend all of the money right up front, you know? Yeah. I would actually like to see some statistics on how many people, like, purchase an iPhone straight out or subsidize it through a plan. I mean, I, I'm i really, like, I don't like carrier plans. I'm really, like, going in on the just purchase the phone independently. I'm U.S. carriers suck, so I'm happy that I don't <laughs> live there. So Finnish carriers aren't that bad, but they still have like a huge markup on you know phones you buy and contracts, or you will pay a lot more than if you would just you know buy it outright. Yeah, true. I still, I mean, I'm on the the bandwagon of getting it through carriers because I usually can't afford a six seven hundred dollar phone right off the bat. Yeah, so. I. I understand Very true. that too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've actually never bought like a super expensive phone in my entire life. So, I mean, the most expensive phone I've bought was actually the five C when it came out. Oh really? How much did you pay for it? Like four to five hundred bucks, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Sounds about right. I actually got my 5S <laughs> for like super cheap because I got it from my dad for free when he upgraded to the 6S and he just, you know, said that I, or I asked if I could have it and yeah, I got it. Nice. All right, well, um, let's see, let's move on here to the next topic. Um, so, let's see, battery status bar, good stitcher, most popular iPhone models. Um, is there anything else, any other topics we, we could talk about at all or should we kind of just move on to some tweaks and stuff? I think we could move on to the tweaks. Awesome. Um, so, first one here is called Quick Clear. And it's kind of a neat way to um, clear the badge of a specific application. Um, I haven't been able to use it because I don't have a 3D touch enabled device. Um, and I don't like any of the tweaks that kind of add those to your to your thing. So, But it's made by um, Andy Week of uh, iOS... Creatix, um, which he's he's a pretty good developer. He's had a little bit of a bad rap in the past, but I think he's redeemed himself. So, I mean, who is this guy? I'm not actually really sure. Andy Week. Yeah. I think we thought we had him on the show. Uh, I mean, is he the, the guy who used to be Mega Fireball or something yeah, like that? Yeah, exactly. So he's back. Didn't he like quit the community back in the day? He's back, and he's. I think he's back as iOS Creatix. Okay. So, and I think it's. I think it's a team. So it's like more than just him. I believe. So okay. I actually oh. reached out to him to be on the show again, and I thought I sent him a Slack invite, but um, he must not have got it, or he's just too busy, or whatever. Okay. Sure. So. It actually, it looks like this was a. Um, a request fulfillment from a, uh, a post that was only about a day old. So, great job. <laughs> Actually, I just saw something interesting that iOS 9.3 Beta 3 has been released. Oh, nice. Huh. Is anyone else's if getting, like, really spammed? By what? <laughs> Your if like... in that? Yeah, the if whatever I F T T T app. Like there's I've seen like four posts of people like claiming there's a jailbreak and it's not real. Oh god. What is I F T T T you don't even know about that? <laughs> what is it's it? It's an app that allows you to make like recipes, so you know like if and when statements. Oh. And well it's it's a lot simpl it's simplified, so I have it set to like if there's in the title of a Reddit post from jail our jailbreak or R slash jailbreak, um 
it sends me a notification. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but I, it doesn't really work. <laughs> oh, well, all right. <laughs> but try it if you want. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool for um, doing things like connecting services that aren't naturally connected. Like, I don't remember everything I've set up, but in the past I've had things set up where, you know, if I would make a tweet with, like, this account, it would be posted to, like, this Facebook page or something. So, basically there's channels that, you know, are official channels in different services. Excuse me. And, uh, and you can, it's pretty much without programming knowledge, you can connect all these different things together. So, it's pretty cool. That's yeah. probably why you don't know about it, William, because you're just like, oh, I'll just code that myself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can find my find the show notes in my like two hundred tabs I have open. Um, so when yeah. do you guys think iOS nine point three will be officially like released? Oh, God. Uh, probably not till March. Yeah. Is that when their event happens or whatever? Does that happen in September? Oh, no. There, the, there there's happen? also a March event. Yeah, there's like a March event, and then there's a big one in September. Like the iPhone ah. 5 SE 6 C S E thing is supposed to come out in March. They'll probably release it then. Yeah, and some new iPads and Macs. Maybe the next Apple Watch 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's rumored, huh? Apple well, Watch 2, too. Actually, that's a good topic. What do, what do you guys all think of the Apple Watch? I have. I love it, man. I use it every one. day. Nice. I have a Moto yeah. 360 on my wrist, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have one, and everyone at my prep school thinks I'm a rich douche. <laughs> so I hide it. Wonderful. But I still use it. That's hilarious. <clears throat> I have a Pebble Time, and um, I actually Rebel. Got, got in on the uh, the Kickstarter for it. I was like the 6,000th person or something. So, I actually had the original Pebble. Aaron, didn't you have the, have the Pebble too? Yeah, no, no, I haven't. Uh, I sold it. Oh. You sold the pebble? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, wait, pebble. did you give him the pebble and then he sold it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I actually did like a really funny affair affair with him. I we actually ex- exchanged a pebble for a graphics card. So no, it wasn't like uh, no, it was not a graphics card. It was the like... graphics card I had now. The graphics oh. card in my like Windows PC I have right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was like some. Funny thing happened. That's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. So and then he sold it. I so mean, what do you guys yeah. use your Apple Watch for, like the most? Time, to be honest. <laughs> Just selling the time. All of my notifications, oh, everything. I use it for everything. Yeah. I mean, the things I use my Moto 364 is checking time because I can't see the clock in our freaking classroom. So yeah, that's time, and then. I only use it for time and notifications. Nothing else. Never. Well, you can't really do much more than that. I mean, I mean other I, than I can do Google Googling and calling and stuff like that, messaging if I want to, but I, yeah. Yeah. Reminders, alarms, stopwatch. There's a lot of things. So, I mean, I mainly use mine, obviously, to tell the time, but, uh, for, well, not my Apple Watch, my Pebble. And um, I have a watch face called X-Time, and it's great. It shows me, on the very top, it shows me a, a little um, charge percentage on the battery meter, big display of the time, uh, the weekday, and then the month, and then the, um, the weather, and then a little two-week calendar. And that's pretty much what I use it for. I mean, I you know, I get notifications on there and stuff, but... Uh, I think Pebble needs to really up their game as far as notifications goes. Yeah, I actually like the 360 because I think it's quite stylish. So it looks really good. Yeah, it's like round. <laughs> nice. So I think the Apple Watch does look really cool, but it's I feel like it's a little bit too like thick for me. Which one? The Apple what? Watch? No. The Apple Watch, yeah. It feels like it's... They could make it thinner. That's their whole thing, is making thin stuff. <laughs> so, my guess yeah, is, is that the next version is, is you know, gonna it's be probably going to have some looking, at least. updates and stuff here and there, but it's going to be thinner. So, 
I'm probably gonna buy it. So I would if I had the money, but I don't. I'm a I'm a poor bastard. Uh, isn't everyone yeah, most yeah. of us? <laughs> so I'll I'm actually thinking saving about my money. Maybe to... buying an Apple Watch in the future. Yeah, Josh, go on. Oh, it's it's not related at all. But I'm I'm saving all my money to. Um, I'm gonna be moving on to a farm. I have to have all the money I need to be able to survive and live the homestead life. So <laughs> I can't yeah. afford that kind of uh, extravagantness. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, did anybody want to take the next topic here? Maybe we'll just move on to the next week. Maybe we can go on to the next week. So who's going to take that? Is anyone, anyone charging? Else? Charging done. I have okay, it. You, who can take charging done? I can if you want. Okay, yeah, you can go on it. with that. It's by Xiphone or Xiphone. I don't know. He's French. He's a pretty good developer, I think. Um, I like the tweak. It's a good idea. But I find it personally annoying. Because, I mean, <laughs> I leave my phone on the charger when it's charged. Because why not? And it just keeps telling me it's charged. And it's like, okay. That's funny. Well, I can actually mention um, it's it's there's software to mitigate this, but supposedly you're not supposed to leave your phone charging. I mean, I'm not gonna get up in the middle of the night just to, you know get my freaking phone off the charger. No, no, that's yeah, get out of here. That's why <laughs> that's why there's software, it, you know, yeah. hard coded in iOS to kind of mitigate that. But um, lithium ion batteries don't like to be maintained at a hundred percent. Yeah. And so I actually um, have a post on um, on the other site I write for about this. But basically, the summary is that lithium-ion batteries like to stay somewhere between about 40 and 80 percent. That's yeah. where like their guts like to be. Um, yeah. Really? Um, when it's anywhere below that or anywhere above 80 percent, it they they start like the probability of them becoming unstable is higher and um okay so i'm gonna be i'm gonna preface this with like i'm not a battery researcher and, and i don't know specifically why this happens but something about the way the lithium ion battery stores power like the the like guts of it or whatever can become crystallized and that's actually how your battery life decreases over time like if you go and you know like for instance, like when you charge to 100%, that 100% is slowly dwindling because your battery is becoming more and more crystallized. Hmm. And so, and Makes so sense. that, so if you so battery maintenance aims to slow down that crystallization process. So, huh? Interesting. Yeah, well, super interesting. Yeah, I learned a lot about lipo batteries when I was making my uh, Game Boy Advance. Dude, portable, I love that. Thing. My Raspberry Pi. So uh. And you can't overcharge it, and you can't oh, you can't overcharge it. You can't uh, what is it? Uh, Overplete it. Overuse it either. So what I mean by that is you can't let it drain past a certain amount either. Or else, what happens? It could potentially light on fire. <laughs> what kind of battery? Nothing are you major. Using? A regular lipo battery. Most of them have over voltage and. Over usage protection. Huh. That's super interesting. So, sorry, what kind of battery? Is that lithium ion or. What kind of battery what? were you talking about? Lithium, you said it really fast. Lithium ion or LiPo? It's lithium it's polymer. polymer. Okay, so that's that's different, right? That's what that's what you're going to be using in your phones. You're going to. Or at least from Wait. what I know. Is that the same thing as lithium ion? Sorry, I'm just super confused. Okay. No, no, they're two totally okay, so different things. It's like things. the next gen batteries. Uh, many, many people use lipo batteries. Huh. Yeah, lithium polymer. Uh, lithium ion is a t is a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, all these technologies and they're just so crazy. We like. It looks like lithium ion might actually be what's in yeah. phones. That's true. Yeah, that's I know that's for sure true. Yeah, <laughs> iPhones have ion. I mean, most consumer electronics okay, right yeah. now, I think, have lithium-ion batteries. Yeah. Polymer can explode if you overcharge. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you know those so. hoverboard things? That's what's making them catch fire. Oh, those. I hate those. Yeah, that's Jeez. what's making them blow up. Jeez. Yeah. That's totally crazy. I mean, something off topic, but funny about those hoverboard things, they're actually illegal to ride on public roads. <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, actually, in the Brit in Britain, I read that it's illegal to, at least at the moment, ride them on public roads. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. That's crazy. It's interesting. I mean, they just blew up. Why do people call them hoverboards? Do they hover? No. Uh, here's the reason why. It's because they came out, at least from what I remember, uh, the 2015 is that year from uh, yeah. Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, they drew, they were just trying to um, jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> and when it just blew well, exactly. up completely, out of proportion, is the old hoverboard thing. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, what do we have up next? We have. Uh, let's see. What should we take? Should we talk about the um, the questions the... about the jailbreaks? No. Okay. Sure. Who who can take that one? Uh, let's see here. Sorry, just trying to navigate through all of my crazy amounts of tabs here. I mean, you just, you know, go onto your computer and suddenly you have thousands of tabs open and you don't know how they came there. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think I'm think i like sort of like Tyler Durden. And at night I wake up and just browse a bunch of random crap and don't remember. <laughs> okay, so um, I found the link here. So this was a, a uh, somebody kind of was requesting, okay. requesting that a pinned and or a sticky post be made for uh, it says about the is 9.x jailbreak released yet questions why not make a pin thread to answer them um i mean it'd be a good idea but it's still like not gonna you know stymie all of the posts this is just what happens when people are in uh in uh survival mode and or like that don't have a jailbreak they just get mad and they come here and they're like where is the jailbreaks <laughs> but so, most people yeah. Most people get mad when people like the mods or important people answer, oh, check the sidebar. Because you can't view the sidebar like on Alien Blue unless you look for it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you can. But... Well, yeah, but you have to know how. And the thing about stickies is stickies are right there, and they, they work on both desktop and mobile. Yeah, yeah. I think that it would be a better idea to have a sticky be that instead of the um, banner contest thing. You know, yeah. don't yeah. get me wrong. Like, that's kind of a cool idea but it doesn't need to be a sticky i don't think at least not for very long so because it's not really very important you know we already have a banner you know they can easily throw that banner link like in the top of the sidebar and people who are going to be contributing to that would know where to look i think yes so but uh, anyway yeah uh it's you know i think one of the one of the things about a lot of people coming to the subreddit is that um, there's probably a lot of like really new people and or people who just don't really care about being you know like uh, I don't know what the better word to say just polite and or you know how, how to do it right kind of a thing um, so we're always going to have a bunch of these posts and you know it's kind of up to us and or the mods to just you know remove them and or answer the questions or tolerate them and uh, I guess one thing to say is that, you know, you don't need to keep asking about it because when there's a jailbreak out, everybody will know. You yeah. Know? It explodes. There's going to be like 40 posts about it. And, you know, it's two or three of them are at least going to be like a link to the page. You know, there's going to be a, a post of like all these tweaks are updated. You know, you're going to know about it. Just keep yeah. lurking the subreddit and that's how you will find out. <laughs> I mean, I've been waiting for the bloody jailbreak for, like, months and months now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we all are, you know? I'm yeah. still jailbroken, but I'd I'm like not. to update. So, I'm in survival mode. I don't install anything anymore. <laughs> it's, a good thing I have, it's, a good thing, it's a good thing I have another phone. Yeah. yeah well, you yeah. kind of have to as a developer. I, I do. You're not wrong. By the way, when are you going to fix Sticky? <laughs> 
Nothing's broken about it. What do you mean it's not broken? I can't save my notes. Well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> How to customer support. And I can't there taste. You know. That's from your lecture. <laughs> yeah, well. I understand. It's, I can only yeah. imagine how difficult it is, man. William, you said you were going so. to look into that stick stick thing week. Are you are you oh. still able to do that? Which one? The stick. That's we- Oh, well, I, don't, I don't get that thing is it's, ridiculous. It's the best week ever made. That's why it's so cool. It's like the best. Okay, so people yeah. don't know this was a tweak I think yeah. for iOS 7 or or which which when what was the iOS version that came out when um when all the big phones started. Oh, it was 8. Yeah, 8. Yeah. So it was 8. So I think it, this was iOS 8, and um, people were requesting like the ability to, to reach the top of the screen. So somebody literally made a tweak where it just, it's like an activator gesture that like puts the stick on your screen, and you can touch the bottom of the stick, and then the top of the stick will then be like where you're touching or something. <laughs> it's like a little <laughs> stick on your screen. That, uh, that will help it's you. It's just a stick. <laughs> That tweak was like the shit. Oh man! Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here. So this is a really cool app, and or you know, it's a tweak. Um, it's called App Admin, and it allows you to do- uh, downgrade any iOS app to any previous version. No app sync needed. Um, and I guess it does this by hooking into Apple's framework or whatever that allows you to if like your phone isn't supported on an app like you can download or uh, downgrade to the last yeah. supported version i think that's how it that'll works. be patched and, uh, and, i have uh, an ios 6 device and it just says you know do you want to download the latest version that is supported by uh, for ios 6 yeah it probably will be patched um hopefully the developer can kind of circumvent that because this is really cool i think they should allow you to do that anyway um but it's not their model they're always forcing you to update to the latest version so so what do you guys think about it though have, you, has it, have anybody anybody i don't use it because all my stuff is on ios 9 except for my ipod touch 4g so oh man rest in peace nice. ipod touch 4g <laughs> <laughs> i used it to um to download or downgrade, I keep saying download, to downgrade an app just to test it out mm-hmm. and it worked. And then, and then I just, I don't really need it. So I, didn't. I may though. So I may, I'll make uh, reinstall it again once it gets yeah. a little farther along. So pretty cool. Pretty cool tweak. Um, and you know, I, who made that actually? It's on the Unlim apps repo. Is that, is that, is that actually the developer? Yeah, they Unlim make some apps? good stuff. I use Snap Plus instead of Phantom. What is the difference? Oh, nice. What's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. What, Phantom yeah, what's the is really buggy for me, and a lot of the stuff like I keep really? getting it keeps asking me to like I don't know, log in or something. I don't remember. I haven't used it for a while. And I. Huh. It was really buggy for me when I first started using it, but it's mostly. Yeah, and I mean stuff. the whole patch thing where the Snapchat was locking people out. I mean, on the maps. I think Snapchat actually moved it. I don't know if Unlim, Unlim Maps put in their own uh, way of bypassing that. But the thing I like about Unlim Maps version of it is you can make your own filters. So oh, that's wow. that's why I use it. That is really cool. I mean, I'm actually debating if I should, you know, move to the iOS 9.3 beta since I am 9.2. So. If a jailbreak only comes out for 9.2, I'm gonna be like super friggin' pissed, but yeah. I don't think a jailbreak will come out before 9. Point... I don't, yeah. I Didn't the guy from like... Taiji say something? Or I don't know if it was Taiji or Pangu say something about uh, stay on 9.2.1 if you are, because yeah. of some yeah. sandbox escape? Yep, we actually talked about Pangu, this. Pangu, and I think he added, he said yeah. upgrade to... I couldn't remember if you said that latest, last time. Yeah. yeah, I think we discussed that. Yeah, and basically we said, you know, we're not really too concerned because we're really careful with what we yeah. download anyway. So, yeah. At least I am. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Anyway, so let's see if we can pull up any more questions or do you guys have any other 
other things to. No, nope, mm-hmm. that's it for me. I don't think I have anything, anything special. Nope. But I think I'm actually gonna update to, to 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 the nine point three AWS. Yeah, why not? I actually I'm gonna get night shift. You know. Yeah, that way you can you can actually you know tell us. Yeah, I actually like was on nine point you know, three beta one, and then I downgraded to nine point two when the nine point two point one thing came out. But yeah, I don't know. Should I? Should I not? I will be super freaking pissed, but I don't think that a jailbreak will come out for only 9.2. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so, uh, let's see here. So one thing I'll mention, just just if, if anything, for a little bit more time. Um, I'm trying to find my... Uh, hey, by the way, I'm William sorry. or anyone, do you actually know... Doesn't like Apple preview the you know, next version of iOS in the March event? I think they do. Uh maybe. I yeah. think we'll get you know the features of iOS ten like in a few months. Uh that's possible. And yeah. The first beta. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're right. Don't quote me on this one. I think they're constantly doing that. Yeah. I'm gonna hey. quote you everywhere. But you know, I was just wondering so, if that's um, the case because I really want to see what iOS 10 brings. Yeah, I, I, I think they're gonna be. It's a little bit gonna be a little bit more feature heavy than. I hope it's gonna be a big supposedly, redesign. Yeah, supposedly nine was more for focusing on um, performance. Yeah. Performance on the 4s. <laughs> 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 Um, who is still in the 4S? I don't know. I don't know. Rest in peace, those people who are. Well, what did you, uh, what what did you say? What was that? Uh, let's see. It's only 4.03% of people are still yeah. on the oh, 4S. God. <laughs> I mean, I have a 4S and so. it's just sadly slow. It's so, it's so slow, it's sad. I mean, I could imagine it would be still okay on yeah, I'm six. six. It would be okay, but on nine, it's just a distraught. You know, then you'd still get to use uh, Byte yeah. SMS. And so, um, so anyway, let me. I'm going to fill a little bit of time here uh, talking about something that uh, is super interesting to me. And uh, a guy named uh, Tom Liu actually um, reached out to me this morning, and uh, I've worked with him in the past on on some uh, there's another blogging team and stuff. Um, he actually was reaching out to me saying, "Oh, don't, don't uh, bother with Ionic, you know, just ignore him, you know, blah blah blah." <laughs> it was kind of cool. It's like, "Oh, thanks, man." Um, so anyway, he—it's funny. Uh, Tom Lube has been sort of accused of being I hate Snap <laughs> <laughs> because he knows so much about um, like the low-level stuff, and uh, I think the reality is he's actually friends in real life with I hate Snow. And so it's kind of really cool because he um, literally, like, they'll probably just get together and, like, you know, drink and, like, just talk about iOS hacking stuff. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read a post that he made um, probably a little, little over a year ago. And I think it was edited a year ago. Um, and it's talking about, it's, the, so the, the title is... Um, how iOS boots and why we, um, okay, this title's weird. It says, and why mobile substrate doesn't affect the device before it's turned on. So bear with me because I'm going to be reading his post, but it's super, super interesting. and It's not that long. So um, he says, I see a lot of posts talking about using mobile substrate tweaks to prevent DFU mode, to change boot logos, or to uh, remove DFU mode altogether. He says, I just want to stop everyone thinking about these kinds of things and hopefully stop it from coming up as much, as well as try to explain why they are in no way possible or even remotely viable. Uh, The way that all iOS devices work is they follow what's known as a boot chain. When the power button is pressed, the device prompts the boot ROM, which is read-only memory. It uh, It begins a bootloader which is only 64 kilobytes, which has anti-bricking mechanisms such as DFU mode, 
this is why we can't remove DFU mode. It's actually built into read-only memory. Uh, and it, it cannot be modified other than by actually um, like literally remaking the iPhone. Um, he says, uh, this is why boot ROM exploits are not patchable. The memory cannot be written to. The boot ROM then loads LLB, which is, I think it stands for low level boot, um, which is the next step in the boot chain. Uh, the LLB is loaded. It's basically an upgraded boot ROM and has mechanisms such as enforcing SH, 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 and AP tickets. And after this step clears, it loads iBoot. iBoot is when your screen actually turns on. An Apple logo shows up. iBoot is the biggest bootloader, and it mounts the boot file system and grabs the device's kernel. <clears throat> the kernel is the last step and is, part, and is the part that is exploited during a jailbreak at least public jailbreaks post A4. Because it's the step in the boot which enforces application sandboxing, K slash ASLR signing and randomization, as well as code signing, these are all steps that need to be tiptoed around and voided during a jailbreak. Um, after the kernel fully loads, but before Apple leaves the screen, the Apple logo leaves the screen, is when mobile substrate applied uh, is applied and tweaks from then on begin to function. Because of these reasons, mobile substrate doesn't apply before the kernel and has been and has never been fully loaded. So that was the post. Sorry, uh, sorry if I kind of no. Where was that posted? A little, of, a little bit of a little bit of a mouthful. This was posted in in the sub. I'll link it um, in the show notes, and I'm also going to put it in the show notes of, of the uh, post. All right. Um, so Tom is really cool, and he knows some, a lot of stuff, and uh, and it's just it's super interesting because he actually he actually wrote a similar post um, on the site that we we all um, we all uh, wrote for Oops. Um, a while ago, which I won't mention the name because it's totally totally pointless. But I learned a lot writing there because it was it kind of showed me a lot of stuff about um, like how to work within a blogging team, how to work with you know different people from around the world and stuff. And so I, uh, I definitely learned a lot. Anyway, so what do you guys think of that? Super um, interesting. We actually had yeah. a problem with Aaron. We had a huge audio issue, and we heard none of that. Oh. <laughs> so I think you I heard it. Well, uh, <laughs> well, anyway, what does the rest? What does the rest of the team think about it? I heard. Uh, I heard all of it. Yeah. I did a lot of look into. I did a lot of research into that. Ah, into that for a bit. It's uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's it's. I think it sheds a lot of light on you know what's happening. I guess once you like what's happening software wise once you turn on the device, and um, you know the different layers that are stacked up, and um, you know the screen being turned on is one of the later layers, and then even more so once the um, the OS boots up, it's like the last layer. Yeah. So mobile mobile substrate is part of that last layer and therefore it can't do anything lower. I'm actually having a great time riding so. a virtual wallet la roller coasting a coaster in VR right now and it's making me dizzy so I can't speak. <laughs> I don't even know what that I'm means. I'm using a Google cardboard to you know, be in a freaking roller coaster. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's classic. I love it. Um, anyway, so I guess uh, you know we we're getting pretty close to an hour here, and uh, I don't think we have any more questions and stuff prepared. Um, and we don't have a simple questions thing to go and look at on the on the, um, for the, the uh, subreddit. So, but yeah, unless you guys have anything to uh, add to it, we Fair guys enough. can. Uh, Include yeah. the episode. I think this was it for Jailcat this week. So, yeah, um, I don't know. We have a little weird release schedule. So, I think this would be the second yeah. episode of the week because we just got a bunch of people on board and decided we should record. So, yeah, this should be episode three point five, and we'll be back with the normal schedule next week. Awesome. We may have a three point seven. If I can get yeah, Tom that'll be more more of an interview. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll just kind of have him go over yeah, a bunch that of security awesome. stuff and low level stuff. Um, so one thing I like to mention too. So um, you can find us at uh, jailcast.xyz, and um, I write for uh, well, not lately, but I used to write for a site called um, pocketfulofapps.com. And um, my Twitter is uh, jpashok. And uh, where um, can we find you guys? Aaron, where can we find you on the interwebs? Well, you can find me on Twitter at at Rulicious. So, yeah, I think that would be linked nice. in the you know show notes so people can actually find you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead yeah, and send me that that's link. That's better. And then, uh, Jamie, you, have a, you yeah. have a YouTube channel, right? I actually used to have a YouTube channel. It's kind of an abandoned project now, so it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> You're no, not going to update it anymore? Be it. Maybe, you know, someday in the future, but now, you know. I think I'm going to be more focused on the podcasting right now and theming. I actually got into theming a while back, you know, with actually Derek. Yeah. We're actually We're working, working on, on something. Do you want to see what I've... Nice. Do you guys want to see what I've done? I'm MTAC8 on Twitter. Yeah, and... Awesome. Awesome. And do you have a website I'm about working Derek? on it. It's nice. not up yet. You can also find me on Twitter at Jummy Emily, but yeah, good luck spelling that, so that will also be linked in the show notes. <laughs> and <laughs> don't forget to follow Jailcast on Twitter at Jailcast. And also, if you have any questions for us, you can tweet them. You know, you can tag us at Jailcast or use the hashtag Jailcast, or you can also post at our subreddit at slash r slash Jailcast. Yep. And uh, how about you, William? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at William underscore V-A-B. And on Reddit, I'm NBQ5, and as in Nancy. Uh, <laughs> and my website is actually theirepo.com, and that is also the repository in which most of my tweaks are hosted, outside of Mind My Eye. Yeah. So I think this has been, or cool. do you have anything to say? Actually, one, th- one thing I'll have to say is that, um, so we're, we're looking into different monetary strategies um to help support like all of our um time investment and mainly hosting costs. um you know i i paid for the whole first year of hosting which i don't mind this is a fun project but um it'd be cool to recomp that and or um you know get into the the green so so far we're in the red um but it's not our focus we're not out yeah. here to make money like this is just a lot of fun i've made a bunch of really cool friends um but i think we do have a right to at least try to to get into the green and so we're looking into we already have some ads in the site and you know we want feedback about them i'd like them to be smaller um will's gonna look into that for us yep and uh we're, we're gonna be creating a uh, patreon account and so what we'll be doing is um uploading special content to our patrons there and um, maybe we'll have stretch goals and stuff where like you know i'll talk as a girl the whole time if we raise some <laughs> money <laughs> um, you know, just fun stuff like that. Like make it make it fun. You know, it doesn't have to be like this stupid thing. And uh, yeah. And so, but you know, we we want to we want to see where we can go with this project. So, oh, and then that also reminds me, I applied for an Audible, Audible dot com um, affiliate link thing. So what we'll be doing if we get approved for it is, I'm going to take about thirty seconds out of each episode where. Um, or somebody will take 30 seconds and everybody else will shut up and we'll just kind of mention, you know, this is our affiliate link. Um, this is what audible.com is about. And, um, you know, what we'll try to do is, is look into some, um, relevant books on, on their site. And so if you don't know what audible.com is, it's a, it's a, um, I oh, can't think of it, an audio book website where you can download, I think it's a subscription based model and you can download so many, audiobooks um, every month and um, so maybe we'll find some books on coding or you know objective yeah, stuff something that can maybe stuff. you know get you get you developing yeah and uh, and we hope we hope it's okay with our listeners and it's you know it's going to be something that's um, relevant and uh, it's actually a free way that people can support us all we need to do is have two people a month sign up for a free trial and for their free trial you get to download one book of your choice and, um, you know, if we get two a month, we get paid. And so if we only get one a month, it carries over to the next month. But, um, you know, it's free. And, hey, if people don't want to pay us with or, you know, donate or something, 
just sign up for the account and yeah. we'll be stuck. And yeah, this has been Jailcast. And happy to sign up. And yeah, I wish everyone a good day, evening, morning, whatever it is when you're Awesome. Thank cool. you. Thanks, guys. Bye.